Hey there, friends. I'm Punky Tolson, and this is the Life on Life podcast. Hi, guys. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here today. I've got a big lesson for us, and we're going to wrap up the season and this particular stream of messages on fear. Um, what we've been talking about is how we're going to take hold of the lies in our mind with the Word of God and override those with truth. Fighting the lies of the enemy, I said last week, is a spiritual battle, and he's after our mind, and it takes spiritual weapons to fight him off. We can't just walk away from it. We can't just ignore it. Um, these weapons, I call them the two weapons that Paul talks to us about in Ephesians 6 and 2 Corinthians um, 10 and also in Romans 12. I call these weapons of mass destruction, and there's only two, and it's God's truth and prayer. And those two things together are powerful. They are a powerful massive, destructive weapon of warfare and destruction. And so that's what we're going to learn to use today. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro and kind of a recap on the last few lessons that we've talked about um, this whole fear thing. So yesterday I was talking to a friend and she had been listening to the podcast and she said, I, I listened to your most recent podcast and I just had to stop and just walk away because I mean, that's my thing. It's just all up here in my head. That's where I'm battling the fear. And I said, well, gosh, you know, this started out as just messages I thought could benefit y'all. And then lo and behold, I find myself needing this so much right now because I'm in this crazy season, had big breakthrough this week, but I told her, finish listening to it. And then today um, I'm going to give you what I think are some real helpful, practical um, suggestions for how to use these two tools of God's word and prayer. Okay, so I, I'm going to give you this quote. Um, my husband actually used it the other day in a message, and it's by a um, man named William James. He's a psychologist, and he said, what holds our attention determines our actions. And it's kind of like we talked about last week. Um, as a man thinks in his heart, as a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. We, we live in the direction of our thoughts. And whatever's got a hold on our attention has captivated our mind in some way, it, it will lead us. It will direct our steps. It will determine the course of action, the way we live our lives. And that can be positive and that can be negative. And what I'm focusing on with you guys is how we can get stuck in these negative thoughts, these lying thoughts that the enemy intentionally hurls at us in order to keep us stuck and live out the life God has called us to live. A life of abundance, and by that I don't mean like material abundance, I mean abundant in the things of Christ, walking in freedom and walking the path that he planned out for us and the work he created for us to do. So we live in the direction of our thoughts. We've got to be sure that the thoughts we are thinking are leading us in the right direction. Otherwise, we can't trust those thoughts. We gotta stop stop thinking them. So if the thoughts we're thinking are lies that nourish fears in us and keep us stuck, well then we're gonna stay stuck. We're gonna stay stuck in a lie, believing untruth. And we're gonna be agreeing with the enemy every single time we do that. The enemy of our soul, instead of agreeing with God, the God of the universe, our Abba Father, who has created you, he's created me in his own image as his masterpiece, it says in Ephesians 2.10, his one-of-a-kind work of art, highest work of art, endowed with, wired with talents, gifts, abilities, um, and a plan for your life, a unique, specific purpose that he created you for and me for. In the uh, writer of Ephesians, Paul says, to do these good works that he created in advance for you to live out and for me to live out as he lives his life through us. But we can thwart that. We can stop that when we're stuck in fear. So if you don't live the life he's created for you to live and the, do the works that he's created in advance for you to do, then nobody else will because nobody else can live what God created for you to live in him. So lies, what is a lie then? A lie is anything that is counter to the truth of God. A lie is anything that is counter to the truth of God. Write that down, think about it, put it in your brain and don't forget it. Lies feed us. They brainwash us with fear that keeps us stuck in unhealthy thought patterns 
that always result in an unhealthy way of life. Again, we think, we, we live in the direction of our thoughts. We're gonna go the way we think. Destructive ways of life, defeated ways of life. And none of that is in line with the abundant life that Jesus Christ came to give us. And none of it is in line with God's holy, almighty, powerful word. So what's the opposite of fear? You know, these lies that create fear in us that keep us stuck. What's the opposite of fear? Well, the opposite of fear is not peace and calm, like you might think. The opposite of fear is faith. The result is peace and calm, but the opposite of fear is faith. Jesus was asleep in the boat with his disciples. Remember the story of uh, the storm? And um, at one point, Peter gets out and walks on the water. But when that storm kicked up and there was a rage on the sea, Jesus is in the boat and he falls asleep. And the disciples are screaming like children, um, it describes in the original language. And they're, they're, they're yelling, Lord, don't you care? Lord, save us. And he says to them, why are you so afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? You of little faith. Then he rose and he calmed the storm, rebuked the storm and the wind. And it says that there was a great calm and peace that settled in over the water. Calm, peace, soundness of mind. That's what Jesus wants for us. That's the way we're supposed to live as his followers. So what was the lie that the storm was shouting at these guys? The lie was, Jesus won't save you. Jesus doesn't even love you enough to save you. You're not worth saving. He doesn't care about you, and he can't even save you to begin with. It's a lie. It's all a lie. So the opposite of fear, then, is faith. Fear and lies go hand in hand, and faith is what we need to override that. We've got to learn how not to get over our fear, but to faith over our fear. Grab hold of what the word of God says, override the lies and the fear with truth, and keep walking on that water. Faith, it says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So we've got to hear the word of God, read the word of God. It, it actually means be ready to see, hear, listen and respond to what God says, to trust him, to trust his word. And to trust God is to trust his word. That's what faith is. And we've got to have that faith that comes from the word of God. Romans 12, one and two, you probably know this. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That word transformed by the renewing of your mind, transformed, it's, it's a Greek word that, me, that where we get our word metamorphosis from. So metamorphosis is a, an internal mental transformation with a physical transformation that results. So there's going to be, again, a thought process that results in physically how we live our life even how we look, I mean, you can tell the difference in a person that's insecure and scared and one that is calm and confident. So we've got to reprogram our minds. We've got to transform them, create, this is fascinating to me, that you can really actually recreate neural pathways or create new neural pathways in your brain. I've talked about this before on the podcast. Look into some of Dr. Caroline Leaf's writings on that, but we can actually create new neural pathways of thought that reprogram us, transform our thinking so that we have new behavior in our life and the way that we live, refocusing our attention on truth Philippians 4, 8, and 9 talks about that. Like fix your thoughts on what is good and true and right and noble and praiseworthy and honorable and peaceable. Any of those things. Recalibrating, refocusing your mind, your thoughts on what is the truth, the truth of God's word. In Ephesians 5, 26, okay, this is a great passage. It actually is in reference to husbands and wives, and Paul writes, um, but he compares um, the, the relationship between husband and wife as Jesus with the church. And he says, love your wives, just as, husbands love your wife, just as Christ loves the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. 
holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. Chuck Swindoll, um, the writer, teacher, pastor, uh, former president of Dallas Seminary, just love him. He said this about that passage, just as clear, fresh water cleanses our bodies, God's written word washes us clean deep down in our souls. It purifies our thoughts and scrubs our motives as we absorb and obey or apply its truths. I love that. Just think of that, how it purifies and our thoughts and scrubs our motives. And, and not just when we have um, ungodly um, motives and behaviors, but thought patterns that create um, motives that cause us to live a certain way that is, that is not characteristic and co completely in the opposite way of what God wants us to think and, and to believe. So I loved that. So here's how we get our minds clean. Here's how we scrub up our minds and brainwash them with the water of the word, overriding these lies that keep us stuck and keep us living afraid. We have to override those lies with truth and create these new neural pathways of spiritual truth in our minds and freedom in our lives. So that's what we're after. Again, yet last week we looked at 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. I'll just read it for you again. We as human, we are human rather. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture the rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. I love that word picture. We capture those rebellious thoughts and we teach them a lesson. We teach them to obey Christ. And last week I asked you as part of your assignment, it's to write down all the obstacles that you're battling in your mind, the lies that you've been believing, um, to identify those things. Um, for instance, um, thoughts that are fear-based, thoughts that have to do with um, trust and doubt, um, love, uh, self-image, insecurity, confidence or lack of confidence and unforgiveness. Um, to look, look in your life and see what's going on in there, maybe kind of take those strands and trace them back to what they might have originated in. So that was the first thing I asked you to do, just identify those thoughts. Okay, then the next thing, and this is um, just part of the end lesson today, we got to find what God actually says on the subject. We've got to go into the Word of God and find what He says on the subject by looking up the word that you've, that, that you've identified, if it's fear, if it's love, if it's doubt, whatever it is, by identifying that word, looking it up in the concordance, and most of your Bibles will have a concordance in the back of the Bible, and it's just going to be words um, associated with, you probably can't even see this, so I don't, probably won't bother, but um, words that are um, uh, either there by topic or just the words as they appear in the scripture, and it'll have references underneath them. So you can do that, and you can um, uh, dig into the scripture that way, or you can go to BibleGateway.com. Now, these resources will be in the show notes. Um, go to BibleGateway.com and do a word search, for instance, on fear. Put fear in there, and you're going to get all of these scriptures that are going to pop up in whatever particular translation you, ch translation you choose. Um, you're going to get all of these scripture references, these Bible verses on fear. Um, and I can give you more uh, ideas on how to do this, or you can visit um, um, the website punkytolson.com and, and look under there um, at Bible study tools and how to study your Bible. Um, then you're going to print out the actual Bible verses. So just there's a print option on BibleGateway.com. Uh, just print out those Bible verses and you're going to get several pages. So what I do is just clip them together and I start going through, reading through those Bible passages. And I highlight the ones that really speak to me, that really um, start to resonate with my with my my spirit in some way that speak to whatever I'm dealing with. So print those out, go through, read them through, highlight them, and then what I do is take the ones that I've highlighted that I think, okay, this is this is really something that is speaking to me, and I write them down. Now you can either write them down on a piece of paper, type them out, or whatever, put them in like a sheet protector, or what I like to do is use handy dandy spiral bound index cards. You can get them like at CVS or any place, and just write those scriptures down on these spiral round index cards. So you've got something that is easy, portable, you can carry it with you all the time. So you feel those doubts and fears creeping up, you just 
whip open your little dagger of the spirit and you're going to be able to um, access those scriptures really quickly. So the, so print it out or write it in your um, spiral bound index cards. Um, then as these old negative thoughts start to chatter away, that, that chatterbox clicks in and starts to bombard you with those thoughts and fears, something triggered that, maybe a, you ran into somebody, maybe you heard some things, some pressure, some stress, whatever, all those things crop up. You can start to pray and say aloud those Bible verses that you've written down in your little um, notebook or index cards. Um, it is good, I've said this before, it is so good for our own ears, ears to hear our own voice declaring God's word, speaking God's word out loud out loud over the, the negative tapes that are in there and just er erasing those old tapes and speaking new truth and recreating pathways with true truth, you know, just paved with true truth. So we're going to um, record those new thoughts, um, healthy thoughts, get them in your brain. Those are God's thoughts. So we're overriding those lies, what, this, what the enemy wants us to think, with what God thinks about us and declares over us. All right, so identify the thought. I'm gonna take you through an example of what I did in my own life, okay? So first I'm gonna identify the thought. I struggle with confidence. I struggle with feeling adequate as a writer, as a speaker, as a teacher, um, even in like study and preparation. And even though I know God has called me to um, a communication gifting and to use that gift, um, and I truly delight in it, there's just fears that I deal with that the enemy likes to torment me with. Um, the thought that I think uh, that I hear in my head over and over again is you can't do that. You've never even graduated from college. You've never been to a seminary. You're not smart enough. Who wants to hear what you have to say? You've screwed up in your life. No one's going to believe you. You're a fake. You're just showing off. You should be do something, doing something else with your time. And other lovely thoughts like that. Isn't that nice? Okay, there. I confessed. So that's what you're going to do. All right. Second thing, I looked in the concordance in the back of my Bible, and then I searched on Bible Gateway com for following words like confidence, competence, insecurity, strength, weakness. Those are just some of the words. So here's some verses that go along with that. Now, when I write these verses down, when I look them up and then I highlight the ones that really resonate with me, then I write them down and I write them down in a personal way. So I personalize the scripture for me as if I'm saying it to myself or God is saying it to me. Okay, so that may sound weird. So listen, here's what I do. So, this is from Hebrews 10, 35. So, do not throw away your confidence, punky. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God for you, you will receive what he has promised. Okay? 2 Corinthians 3, 4 through 6. Such, such confidence as this is mine through Christ before God. Not that I am competent in myself to claim anything for myself, but my competence comes from God. He has made me competent as a minister of a new covenant, not the letter, but, the, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So I'm personalizing that, um, that verse by using me and my in there, okay? Also Philippians 4.13, you probably know this one. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So I can turn that around as if God is saying that back to me. If Jesus is saying this right to me, Punky, you can do everything I've called you to do through me and the strength I give you to do it. Okay? Are you following me? All right. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. But he said to me, my grace, Punky, is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness. And then I list those weaknesses. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses. And I just go through and I thank God and delight in them for him in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I like to hear God's voice saying, don't forget, don't forget where you are weakest, 
that's an opportunity for my power to show up strongest in you. Okay. And then finally, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And I love this verse. I have it written in front of my Bibles that I teach out of. And it's Paul when he went to the Corinthian church to teach them. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony of God. And I love that because I remind myself I don't need to have all of this eloquence and all of this superior wisdom and all of this knowledge and be so studied and have all this scholastic um, education behind me. Um, as I proclaim to you the testimony of God, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and in fear and with much trembling. I love that, that the apostle Paul experienced weakness, fear, and with much trembling. He dealt with fear, you guys. And then he goes on to say, my message and my preaching were not with wise, persuasive words, the kind an orator would use, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith, the faith of the people you're speaking to, might not rest on men's wisdom or my wisdom, but on God's power. So I love that and I pray that for you teach. And as I said, I write that in front of my Bible. So those are some scriptures that I've used and that's how I've used them. Okay. Then the next thing I do, the final thing I do is now I'm going to write it down and I'm going to pray it. I'm going to turn it into a prayer right back to God. And this is, this is what I do, praying it back to him. Father, I know that in and of myself, I am not competent to do anything in and of myself for apart from you, I can do nothing. But I know that my confidence and my competence comes from you. And you have made me competent as a minister of a new covenant that gives life and to teach and speak that message to those who need it. Therefore, for I will not throw away my confidence. I will not trash it saying, what's the use? No, I will persevere so that when I have done your will, I will receive all that you have promised. For I can do all things that I cannot do on my own, only through Christ who gives me strength. And by your power, I can do whatever you have called me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you get the idea, right? Now, if you're driving while this is going on and I'm talking to you, I want you to go home, take some time and re-listen to this and write these things down and do them, y'all, okay? I do hope you'll give God a chance and you'll give this a try. I certainly had some good, good times growing up. I did. But the reality is that I grew up in what I call dysfunction junction. And I think that most people to one degree or another have enjoyed some dysfunction in their past. Okay. All of that affects us. And all of that plays a big role in our emotional and physical life. And God certainly is aware of all of it and his sovereignty. He looked at it and he allowed it y'all that we can get stuck and that is certainly where the enemy wants us all the time. It doesn't mean that we have to stay stuck and live stuck. God did not want us to be stuck. He has come to set us free in Jesus. Galatians 5.1 says it is for freedom that you have been set free. And Jesus has done that for us. So Jesus wants us not to forget, to remember that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But that Jesus has come to bring us life and more of it, abundant life that he talks about in John 10, 10. So that's my prayer for you guys. And that's my prayer for me, that we would walk in the freedom that is ours to walk in, in Christ, untangled from the lies, free of the doubts and the fears that have kept us stuck for who knows how long, and that we would experience that abundant life of Jesus as we get to know him better and then let him live his life through us fully and completely doing the good work that he created for us to do. I love you guys so much, and I hope that you have found this helpful. And if it's been helpful to you, maybe you can grab a friend and listen to this again with her and let it encourage her as well. Pass it along to someone who might need it. And also leave me a message. Leave me a message in the comments or uh, send me an email um, to the website and um, or to the podcast. And then um, just tell me how much it's helped you and what way it's helped you and what you've been able to overcome because of this uh, learning about this concept and putting into practice what we've talked about. 
and um, how it's helped you break free of the lies that you've been believing and get out of the boat and get your feet wet, okay? I'd love to hear what God is calling you out of the boat to do, what you've been afraid to do, but now you're gonna roll up those skinny jeans and you're gonna get out of the boat and start walking. So let me hear from you, okay? I'd love to. Now I've got two more bonus episodes we're gonna get to um, in the next couple of weeks to help you get a little bit of a direction and some encouragement for the new year and how to dive into the scripture on your own and um, really um, take some steps in opening God's word for yourself, learning how to read it and study it on your own. Okay, I'm excited about that. So um, goodbye for now, but you're going to get these two bonus uh, episodes a little bit later. So that's that for that today. Um, In the meantime, you guys, I love you so much. And don't you ever forget that you are greatly and dearly loved by the King who does not want you to live afraid one more minute. Okay, see you later.